YouTube, what's the deal? Your boy's back. Video number two on the brand new channel. You know, I had to make a new one. The old one got locked out. You know what I'm saying? Um, unfortunately, that sucks big time. Hopefully, when the payday comes around, I still get that paycheck. But it's your boy Savvy 100 until then. So, uh, hope you guys like the new haircut. My hair still, my head's still a little shiny, looking like a light bulb and shit. But uh, the tan will catch up. Got a few tats, you know, the Savvy 100. You know what I'm saying? Got that 100. Got the uh, the rose. This P been back here. That thing been back there, boy. But uh, yeah, man, I just got tired of my hair, man. It was all in my face, 24/7. I'm trying to eat food. I can't eat food because of it. I'm trying to enjoy anything. Just couldn't do it. So I I cut it short, you know, for a little while. Then I just was like, you know what? I'm good. Shave it. End up getting it all tatted. I got some good pieces in mind. Um, I vlogged that. You know what I'm saying? But aside from that, let's go ahead and get into what today's video will be about. I want to talk about, before I get into anything, I do want to talk about the simple fact of exactly where this channel will be going. Because I have a concrete direction. My directional path for this plan, for this channel is, is, is great, man. It's, uh, it's very simple, right? As far as addressing anybody else or channels, I won't do it. Got nothing to say. That's it. That's it. Done. Dada. Bam. Close the book. Now. Let's talk about a crazy ass situation of losing the channel. Losing the channel means that all that content, it while it's still up, while everything's still going, and hey, I am still hooked up to direct deposit. Um, it does mean though that you know it's not accessible to me. So videos that have, may have been there before, uh, the ones that I have made private, or videos that I have deleted, or videos that are even there still deep into the feed of that channel. Maybe I can just bring them back to life on this channel and start from scratch, you know what I'm saying? Because we all love a good one. So, with that being said, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So, this one I'm going to be talking about the first time that I met Charles Manson. Because I had actually met him a number of different times in Corcoran Shoe, Corcoran State Prison Security Housing Unit, which is the shoe. So, anybody who ever was in the shoe around those years, he's been in Corcoran forever. But around the years of when he was in PHU, um, which is 4A4 right. Anybody who was in 4A4 left, 4A4, um, 4A3 right, 4A3 left, 4A2 right, 4A2 left, blah, 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 all the way to the one. Um, you guys know, it was a common thing to see Charles Manson. Doesn't nobody get a cookie, doesn't, a cookie, doesn't nobody get a, a golden nugget for seeing Charles Manson. So before you want to call me a liar, just understand the fact that not only me, but hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of inmates have crossed paths with them, had autographs on their drawings, which I happen to also get one, which I don't have no more because uh, my stepdad has it, and uh, who knows where that's at now. And unfortunately, he signed it on the back. I told him to sign it on the front, and he signed it on the back. He probably didn't want to mess up my art. Big old piece like this. Um, so anyways, the first time I met him, uh, my celly had met him first, right? My celly Pee Wee from Orange County, from Dark Side, met him first. And uh, he was like, hey, fool, he came back from yard. He was like, hey, fool, because I was babysitting the batch, right? When you make pruno, you make wine. Someone's got to stay in from yard. They got to watch just in case the cops want to come in there, do a security check, search your cell. Boom, you guys are both getting ridden up. That's 180 day no get back. You know what I'm saying? You don't get that time back. I was already maxed out, but still, you know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to get my celly caught up. I'm not trying to get the house flipped. We got all kinds of curtains and shit. They'll take everything. So... Marcelli comes in, he's all turned up. He's like, hey, fool, I met Charles Manson. Because they would, sometimes the COs would walk Charles right through the, the cages where we work out. Because now they took away the hard yard, so they put us all in these dog kennels, right? With, with, with catwalks in between them. So he walks him through the cage, and uh, I guess uh, he's seen him, you know, like he, Charles talked to him, whatever. Saw the little, the little swastika, whatever he had on his uh, forehead or whatever. So I'm like, cool, cool, you know, that's, that's cool, that's tight. So I go out to the yard the next day or a week later, however long it is, you know, batch is gone, um, and I see him. But I didn't know he was Charles Manson, because in four, picture this, two rows of kennels, right? Cages, two, 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 and then another row in front of it, two, 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 right? And then our blocks right here, and our blocks right here, you walk out to the cages. Well, in front of 4A4 right, that whole little front little yard area in front of their block is fenced up. And that's where they come out. And they come out as a whole unit, right? 4A4 right A section. Just A section is a little pod. It's a bottom tier and a top tier. And they all come out. And these are the highest offenders. Like a, These are like the highest notoriety cases. The dudes who cannot be put, not even with PC, because they will get killed in PC. 
So they gotta be put in PHU, which is protective housing unit. So all those dudes come out, we see them, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes they'll wave or whatever. And uh, uh, so he, I see this little old guy on the fence, right? And I tell my Sally at the time, I'm like, look at this chomo, you know what I'm saying? Looking like a straight chomo, straight weirdo, you know? Old, old five foot two, maybe five foot three, short, no hair. Didn't have a crazy mohawk, didn't have long hair, didn't have spiky hair, didn't have his beard. And I couldn't see nothing on his forehead. He had some little color, he had the little Ray-Ban looking glasses with green lenses. Green or yellow, one of, some kind of colored lenses. And I'm like, look at this chomo. You know what I'm saying? Look at this weirdo. And my son is like, fool, that's Charles Manson. I'm like, shut your ass up. Fool, that is not Charles Manson. He's like, that's Charles Manson. He's like, go talk to him. So I go up to the gate. Boom. And he's already at the gate, holding the gate, looking at us, right? Because his whole thing is he hated being housed where he was housed. He didn't respect none of those people he was housed with. You know what I'm saying? He didn't like them. But he had to be there. He had to be with them because he was such a high notary. Any prison, any yard, he's dead. They're going to kill him. He, stand, he stood no chance, nowhere in prison. So he's on the cage. I walk up to my, like the entrance to my kennel. And I'm like, uh, I'm like, what's up, man? And he's like, it's hot. You know, it's hot outside today. Huh? It's like 110, 112 or something in Corcoran in the summertime. And I'm like, yeah, man, yeah. And he's like, man, I really wish, uh, I wish I could be in those cages with you guys. But every time they move me, it makes front page news. And I'm like, oh, is that right, huh? And he's like, yeah. And he got to telling me some other, some other nonsense. You know, you couldn't, I couldn't really. I was starting to get an inclination, though, that if it wasn't Charles Manson, this that, this dude was somebody uh, of high notoriety. So I tell him um, just to just to really test him, right? I'm like, hey, uh, and then there, by this time there was already uh, in the kennel next to me a wood who was like basically orgasming all over his little boxers by seeing Charles, right? So he was like, Charlie, Charlie, uh, Charlie, uh, where are you from? Just all over this, all over Charles' nuts, right? I'm just talking to him. So, so Charles is blowing him off talking to me because he's looking at this dude like, man, you just a groupie, you, you whack. I didn't read books, I didn't study the case. Everything you could think of, I was, I was all up on that stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's real life crime, uh, true crime stuff. Hey, before any of you guys ask what this is, I burned my nose with a cigarette. Like three days ago, all bad. So, anyways, um, I asked him. I said, "Hey, man, so what do you think about the Beatles, right? Because anyone who knows Charles Manson knows about the Beatles. He believed that they were uh, subliminally reaching out to him and saying things in their songs. And uh, he said, I used to listen to him. I didn't listen to him anymore. I asked him about Freemasons. I asked him about uh, shit, man. I asked him about everything I read in the book. I asked him about Helter Skelter. Flat out, blew my mind. I said, uh, I said, what do you, what's up with Helter Skelter?" He said it was. He said it was a joke. It was fake. It was. It was all along. It was just a joke the whole way through. Like, damn, a, a joke. Like, he said, man. He, he was like, uh, uh, the only thing I will. He said the only thing I really wish that I could have done is killed more. Like, took them all with me. So the man had no, you know, remorse, no regret. He was old as hell, late sixties, maybe seventies at the time. This was two thousand and thirteen. So early 2013 april around april around that time 2013 and uh he was still getting visits every fucking weekend i was going to visits with him right like we they would walk me on the track shackled up at the waist he would be and shackled up at the feet and he would be shackled pushing his wheelchair and they would have like six cops around him i'd have two one on one side one on the other side both of them have their batons out so I couldn't get to him, it would be impossible. But it would be a trip, it'd be like, damn, I'm walking to my visit, while this fool's walking pretty much right next to me, but in between a whole army of COs. And uh, yeah, man, he was real popular, he walked the track, and all along the track is just different rows of kennels in, placed in front of these different blocks, and everybody's like, Charlie, what's up, Charles, what's up, Charlie? You know, then people get to disrespect, what's up, you motherfucker? <laughs> Yeah, man, but, uh, yeah, that was the first time I met him. And then the second time I came back, he had been in trouble. Um, he was in trouble for, I think, getting caught with cell phones or something like that. He got in some kind of trouble, something to do with visiting. And uh, he would they moved him from 4A, 4 right A section into B section, into our section. So he no longer could come out, obviously, couldn't come to yard, couldn't function, couldn't program. But he was in the cell uh, 
on the bottom tier. I was on the top tier. So that's when I sent my drawing to the homie and I was like, hey, have the fool sign it on the front. I told him specifically on the front. And he he did it, slid it into his cell. Charles signed the fucking back, did a put a swastika, right? His signature was like a crazy signature, but it was like a swastika, but like each side pulled apart. Like it wasn't a complete one, right? And so I ended up getting it back like day. It took days to get him because he's he was older and he's slow. You know what I'm saying? He's not as quick as he probably once was. Well, anyways, they ended up moving him for, from our block for ordering people packages. People were sending them package lists. This dude had so many followers, so much mail. Every night, mail call was flooded. Pen pal after pen pal after pen pal after pen pal. He had women moving their children near any prison that he went to. They would pick up, move next to his prison. It's a trip, man. It's a trip. But yeah, I've seen him uh, all together. I've probably seen him like three or four times. I used to go to the shoe all the time, in Corcoran at least. And it was a trip, man, seeing his, uh, seeing his ass the first time. After that, I was just like, eh. He's just an old, tiny, shriveled up dude. And he wasn't even the craziest fucker in that unit. The other dude that was in that unit, they had that dude, Juan Corona. I want to say his name was. He, he had killed all them immigrant, um, all them workers, the field workers in Corcoran, in those orchards and shit, and buried them over, fuck, over 20, over 25, I can't even remember, he was old as hell, he'd come out and do his little dips, and look like a little robot, like, ee, 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 ee. they had some, like, high profile, um, informants from, like, in, from the Nuestra, like, from the, from the top, that way, uh, they had a lot of, uh, big, big names that were obviously trash, shitty motherfuckers, but, they were, in my opinion, more interesting than Charles. Charles used to just come out sounding drunk as fuck with his guitar, screaming at the moon, screaming at the stars, screaming at the sun, singing a bunch of incoherent shit, you know. Um, his, he's just old. His time was over. You know, he was nothing special. He just, I don't know, but it was just a piece of prison history, you know, being around that, seeing that shit. It is, is what it is. So I thought I'd share that crazy story with you. Anyone who knows my original channel knows that... Uh, I already did this video before, and this one definitely won't get the views that that one has, but hey, you know what? It's all good, baby. We all in this to win this. I wish nothing but positivity and blessings to all of you guys. Remember, I shaved my head. It's not a bad thing. It's not a negative thing. There's no, there's no connection to anything bad. I'm tired. It's hot. California is on fire. I'm tired of eating and having my hair go this way. I'm tired of waking up with my hair looking like Johnny Depp and shit. I'm good, bro. I've been growing that hair out for years. Years. Once I get my head, you know, fully blasted with great art. Nice art. Not no gang shit. Just art. Then I'll grow my shit back out. I'll probably do a nice fade. Come over some crazy shit. You know what I'm saying? Something that's, something that's going to look nice. You know what I'm saying? But uh, until then, it's much love, much respect. Thanks for tapping in. Keep taps in. If you want, you guys can go subs uh, subscribe to my old channel. Let's keep that bitch growing. Eventually, I'll probably get back in. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. But for now, I'm still hooked up to it through direct deposit. So go check it out, The Savage Family. But right now, I want to say to anybody who's viewing this that's new to the channel, welcome to Savvy 100. That's the channel. That's the name. Y'all already know. Uh, we're going to keep things positive. We are not addressing. We are not... We are not... Uh, making videos we are not going back and forth we are not beefing with nobody i am a youtuber okay much love much respect till next time deuces